welcome to The Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. Next to your kitchen, your bathroom is the most renovated space in the home. Considering entire communities were built around the communal bathhouse, it's little wonder why the room features so predominantly on the renovator's hit list. But technically, it's the trickiest room to do, so getting it right from the start is crucial. This week on The Green Building Show, we've enlisted the help of Alex Donnelly from Add On Projects to help you get yourself and your bathroom performing at its best. Alex, thanks for joining us again. Thank you very much. Now the bathroom DIY, can you explain why the bathroom is the most technical room in the house? Bathroom is the most technical room because there's a lot of detail to it. Um, setting out all your um, basins, your taps, everything, your make sure your membranes are all good, your tiles set out, your electrical set outs, even your lighting and exhaust. So getting them all right, you know, is, is very technical. How are you going to tell whether your wall surfaces or your substrate yep. is, is good to go? Well, a good way is just putting a normal level on it. These days it's laser levels, um, straight edge and a shorter level, going over them, making sure that your walls are up to a standard straight. If you get your, your substrate right, it makes it easier for all the jobs further on, your tiling and putting it and fitting out for all the other appliances, all the other And can you tell if there's actually already tiles on the wall, yep. the quality of the, the substrate you're going to be working on with? Yeah, well, if you, no, it's very hard. If you just want to knock off the tiles, most times your substrate will come off. Depending on how good the tiling job was done previously, uh -huh. sometimes the tiles will pop off and you're left with a good substrate. Sometimes the tiles will take off the substrate and therefore you're going to have to start from scratch. Okay. You know, re-render, re if it's a brick wall, re-render it, you know. All right, so if it's a brick wall, you render it? Uh, that's, that's correct. What if it's if a... Timber frame, you put a villa board on. You know, and, and then from there you just block it all out and, and uh, make sure you put noggins and what in for your, for your um, you work out where your towel rails are, anything that you might be mounting to the walls, block it out and then villa board. So take a rule is going to be your best friend, yeah. or, or measuring tape. Absolutely, measuring tape, plan it. You mentioned our villa board. Yep. Now, how is this different to the, different to the normal particle board that well, you might Well, board is that's a waterproof board itself. Okay. So it's put up, it can stand moisture, um, so it's made for wet areas. And it's easy to work with? It, uh, it, yeah, easy to work with. You can cut it with a grinder, cut it with fibro cutters. You know, there's special saw blades that you can put on a circular saw and cut it with it hooked up to a vacuum cleaner. Okay. So yeah, it's it felt very easy to work with. Well, let's talk about waterproofing that room. If, yeah. um, if we shell the room out and we're just left with the walls that we're going to put villa board on, the floors, is there something that we need to do with the floors? Yeah, well, floors, you put a fibre cement sheeting down, a lot thicker gauge. Um, the tiles, you know, will be on, it's a fairly, fairly heavy load on the floor, so again you do a fibre cement sheeting on the floors. If it's a, a concrete slab, you put a, a cement screed. Um, and then you also membrane it all so that that'll all go to a floor waste that'll be in the, in the floor of the bathroom. Okay, and, and typically in bathroom two, there's what is called the fall? The fall. Very, very crucial, the fall. Know where you want your falls, know where you want your floor waste so you can work out where your falls. If you're working just on where the drain currently is, yep. um, and the fall is already in place, yep. you just keep working to that yes, fall? Yes, that's correct. But if you're going to demolish the bathroom and then redo it, you're going to lose your fall. You're going to lose the screed that is giving you the fall. Uh -huh. So you'll have to re-cement screed and make a new fall. Okay, how, how hard is this to do? That is a tradesman has to do it. I right. mean, you can do it if you've got a good, you know, using your straight edge, using levels. Um, but yeah, I'd advise a tradesman. You don't want to you don't want to have a puddle in your bathroom in the other in the other side. You want to make sure that water gets away. And is it a matter of having one uh, fall drain waste in the body of the bathroom and a separate one in the shower? Absolutely. I, I've seen bathrooms where they've utilised having one in the in the shower, but all the fall runs from one end of the bathroom through to the shower recess. So, but this. This particular, if you normally have one shower uh, floor waste and a bathroom floor waste, separated. Right, so let's say we're going with um, the fall that's there or we've built a new fall. Yep. Um, now, with the angles that are in play here, yep. if you're tiling this floor, yep. is there anything you need to know about the sort of tiles, the size of tiles? Well, the, the bigger the tile on the floor is harder to get cut and get your falls, rounder floor waste. Um, good tilers can cut a tile and you'll see the join but they can hide it as best as possible mm -hmm. to get the shape of your fall. 
Um, you know, if, you, if your floor waste is obviously at towards a closer to a wall, well then all your floor can run straight from one side of the bathroom to the other. You don't have to cut a tile. And if your floor waste is in your centre of your room, then the tiler will have to cut the tile around that floor waste to suit the floor. Okay. Is it kind of a good rule of thumb to suggest maybe floors on a floor keep the smaller tiles? Yeah, it would help, but you know, lot, it's very common these days to see a big tile on the floor. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it's a personal preference, okay. and anything can be done. And as far as walls go with tiling as well, like, do you, do you need to bring in a, a specialist tiler? Or can yeah, you it depends yourself? how confident you are. If you are confident in tiling, I mean, it, you can probably watch a YouTube video or something, and you could get away with it. I like to make sure that my tiles are set out in a way that you'll never end up with such small tile strips. Um, it does take set out, you need to work out your tile grid. Mm -hmm. um, if you're confident, sometimes people can start one tile up and then the cut tile will be your bottom tile against the floor. So you can work full tiles or, or up to three quarters of a tile all the way around. Sometimes but working out in your tile grids is very important. And are you recommending you start from the top of no, the wall? No, no, no. You, you, can, you can start, you leave out your bottom row and uh -huh. start and put in little spaces and then start from there up. You reckon go up? Yeah, you go up because then your tiles are supporting on top as you go up okay. as you glue it. But because you've done your plan, yeah, you you've know... Got, you've, you've got the tile grid already marked on the wall. So no small surprises? No, or... no you won't. Small, yeah, in the corners or against the ceiling. Okay. Well, tiles are naturally um, waterproof. Yep. Um, what about the grouting? Grouting, well, it's, it's all different types of grouting. But you want a good quality grouting because that will absorb dirt, mould and grime. So the better the grouting, the, the better the longer it'll last and the easier it'll be to clean. So it's worthwhile investing in good grout. Is there such a thing as sort of mould resistance? There's meant to be. I'm okay. yet to find it. I think bathrooms always, if you don't look after them, they always develop mould in the, in the grout. But it's also just the dirt and grime of everyday mm. wear and tear. So what about ventilation then? Uh, how important is it to actually have a vent in there or windows? Well, there? ventilation is very important. To get, get, if you're having showers and whatnot, you want to get away the steam. So, um, most, a good exhaust fan can, you know, it depends how, how old the building is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, some, some of the older houses might just vent up into a ceiling space. But I like to make sure they vent out to the outside edge, out through yeah. your eaves or, or something similar. So I suppose this comes back onto you if you're DIYing to do your research? Yeah, do your research. You know, try and get, if, if the older bathrooms some don't have ventilations, they have the old um, aluminium grill in a window, which right. used to be satisfactory back in the day. But, I, you know, you need good ventilation, a good exhaust fan. Okay, well, let's look at the elements of, of what's actually in the bathroom. We've talked about the floors, we've talked about the walls, then we've got the, the toilet itself, the bathtub, the vanity, yep. the basin. Um, any recommendations or anything new happening with bathrooms? Right, all the PC items. Now, that's, as a builder, that is up to the client, mm -hmm. what their budget is. You can go and buy a plastic bath for $150. You can go and buy a cast iron bath for, well, you can go up there. You right. know, it is personal preference, freestanding, built in. It's a personal thing. Um, the the, the freestanding bars are quite uh, luxurious. You know, they're out there, they're, they're shown, they can be put in the middle of a room. A uh -huh. um, lot more effort to set them up. You know, the, again, going back to the set out. If you know what the client wants from the, well, they've got to know if they want those sort of things to get all the services to those uh, and fixtures. And the materials that um, bathtubs are commonly made out of now, it's, I mean, it's always been a ceramic sort of yeah. thing, but there's lots of no, plastics. No, there's plastics now, now yeah. You Do know. the plastics keep the, the warmth as much as ceramics? No, absolutely not. But, uh, you know, if you, you could, if you wanted to, buy a cheap bathroom and spend time, if there's a built in bath insulating around it, you know, if you're that, you know, concerned. Um, but most, a lot of, lot of houses now are just putting in plastic baths. What would you insulate the bath with? Oh, you could have some expanding foams, inch, oh, inch right. walls, um, just a standard insulation bath, you know, that you put in your ceiling. You could easily put that in, built it inside your bath frame. With, as far as faucets and taps, and I mean, for the bathtub, for the shower, and for the vanity yep. as well, it's your own, your client's own choice. That's correct. Their yeah. likes, but is there um, anything particularly you need to watch for when you're setting these things? Well, in place? yeah, because you've got to be, you've got to know your bath height. So if you mount the taps in the wall before before you tile it, you've got to know that the bath can fit underneath the taps. That the spout can reach the bath. Right. Things like that. You've got to know these sort of things. Um, some of the shower heads these days are 
um, mounted, you know, there's no adjusting in them. They're either mounted on the ceilings or mounted, so you've got to make sure all your heights work there as well because yeah. there's, there's no movement. So, so it goes, goes back to this set out. Is there anything that you'd actually um, recommend against, like something that might seem like mm. some new Fandango thing? No, 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 I think client, if the client wants it, you should be able to make it work. Unless there should be no reason why you can't make it work, you know. It, it's, uh, there's some great fixtures out there these days, urban showers, what, big rainwater heads, I think are unreal. Are you seeing more and more um, like different heating elements in bathrooms? Like yeah, you've got the un underheated flooring, yeah. you've got the old fashioned IXL heated lamps, oh, yeah. but the heated flooring is coming more and more popular. It's, um, it's, a, it's a very cheap and you can put on a timer, you can set it to go off a couple oh. hours before you wake up, and so you can walk into your bathroom with a nice warm floor. Nice, that sounds good. <laughs> um, so, I mean, look, budgets, how long's a piece of string? I kind of get yeah, it. Yeah, look, it, it is a personal preference. Mm -hmm. You know, taps can cost from, you know, $100 to several hundred dollars. All the vanities, um, stone tops are very popular. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's up to personal preference, personal budgets. So, what do you think the bare minimum would be that you could get by with? If you're just looking at doing more of a makeover, yep. like big construction things going on, yep. maybe some tiles or some paint. Um, well, you really should be only painting your, your door and your, your ceiling. Yeah, um, bathrooms these days should be tiled floor to ceiling. Yep. You know, instead of the old days, they're going to be tiled halfway up or three quarters of the way up. Yep. I think you, you don't waste your time tile straight. So the, really, the painting is is um, yeah your, your door yep. and your ceiling. Right. Any specific paint? Yeah, you should have a mold resistant paint. Right. Yeah. And and the order in which you need to approach your bathroom. I mean, I'm imagining maybe floors go last. Yeah, floors go last. Do your walls first, but your, your walls will be set out off a, a finished floor level, mm -hmm. which you've already marked out or because you're doing it in your setup. Yeah. Um, yeah, you will, and then because of the, the, the grime that you can get from working in your bathroom, yeah, it's always good to do your floors last. Right. Yeah. So, any no other real order for the other no, stuff? No, no. Well, once, every, once all your tiling's done, then you're, you're basically fitting out with all your fixtures, your vanities, your toilets, shower screens, your baths. Right, fabulous. And the tools and supplies, materials that you're going to need to do this job? Your tools? <laughs> um, look, depending on what what sort of makeover you want to do. If you're going to frame up a bath, you can either do it in brick or do it in timber stud work. So mm -hmm. you're going to need a carpenter or if you're quite confident, you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. If you do it in brick, again, if you're confident, you could brick it up, but I'd advise getting a brick layer. Yep. A lot of the old fashioned baths are all bricked up. Um, you obviously need your plumbers, and they, you have to get licensed plumber to do all your all your plumbing work. If you're going to start putting in new exhaust fans or new down lights or heated lamps, then mm -hmm. you definitely need an electrician to do your wiring. If you're kind of confident with this stuff, though, no, you can't. You can't if for all your plumbing. You can't. You need to get licensed quality tradesmen. Okay. The, the, your, your tiling is the only thing I'd recommend if you're not qualified to to do it yourself. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you're doing your own carpentry, you've got yep. to sort of jigsaws yep. and that yep. sort of stuff. If you're laying you need, bricks. You need to sort, yeah, bricks, you know, that's tape measures. Tape measure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Tape. Um, a good common tool these days is laser levels. Yep. Yeah, laser levels are great. You can shoot a line around there with the laser. Since it'll be a bathroom, the laser line will come up very clearly mm -hmm. and you'll be able to set off, off that laser line. Yeah, all sorts of things. Your taps, your, your tile grids. Ah, yeah, it's good. very handy. And I suppose what I'm imagining is really important here is sealants. Yes, yeah, sealants, silicons. Um, especially if you've got uh, a corner where you've got a stud work meeting brick wall where you're going to get movement. Mm -hmm. So you need a good quality sealant in the corners where you know it's flexible, uh, mold resistant, um, long lasting. So yeah, a good quality sealant to help finish and make your bathroom last. Which one do you use? Which one do you find is the most dependable? Sikaflex is a good quality. Yep. Um, Shelley's make a good product, but you know, there's lots of out, lots of brands and types out there. Again, going back to your budget, yep. you know, right. how big your bathroom is. Right. You know, you've got to put a good sealant around between your walls and your bath. Um, down if you have a shower screen, you right. need a good, you know, so. So let's say the bottom end of the spectrum, a bit of a makeover for your yep. bathroom. How much do you reckon? A bit of a makeover. <laughs> I know, it's such, it's such a broad, almost um, impossible Look, question. I've seen bathrooms where a quick makeover is changing the vanity and painting the tiles, mm -hmm. which is a very quick makeover. 
if you want to, uh, to start from scratch, you can have some people tile over existing tiles. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you're five thousand dollars and up, I believe. You know, right. but really, it's it's up. It's more like ten if you're going to do it properly, and then upwards of that. What's the top is top is top end you've worked on or heard of? The top, oh, I've, without mentioning it, bet you'd be up to about forty thousand dollars bathrooms plus. Oh, yeah. A heated floor and that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, of baths made out of solid stone. Right. Yeah. And gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly, yeah. yeah. Um, what are some common mistakes people make? Uh, not doing the preparation properly. Right. If you don't do your set out properly, you set, they set their taps in the walls not thinking about how high their vanity might be. And so okay. when they install the vanity, next thing you know, they can hardly put their hand around the taps. Or the spout might hardly just reaches the basin. Right. Um, you know, that's, a, that's a very common thing. You know, it, it happens all too often. And, and your waterproofing, if you don't get it right there's major consequences right. if your bathroom leaks whether you're in an apartment block you'll be getting issues downstairs or or if it goes through into your, if it's a common wall you'll go through to your, your hallways or what's over on the other side you can get damp issues waterproofing is a major major part of your bathroom okay well we can consider ourselves warned and yeah again, absolutely. <laughs> thank you for your calls of wisdom that's okay pleasure talking to you we'll talk to you again soon no worries thank you thanks